it's working. It's working. It says you're I'm live. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hello. I think I'm live. Oh my goodness. If you're still with me, thank you for waiting to join me. Technology. Sometimes it can be wonderful and sometimes it can be pretty awful. So um, thanks again for waiting. I'm Dr. Sandra Duncan and the name of this live um, video and live blog is called Busy Hands Are Happy Hands. Well, we're certainly living in a strange world nowadays. We, um, we're busy in a different way. And the scientists have told us that the world's axis is tilted something like 23.5 degrees from the plane of the, of the orbit around the sun and that it hasn't significantly changed in the last 40,000 years. But somehow I think it has changed. It feels like the axis of the world has changed. Things are certainly, certainly different. I wanted to talk a little bit about that difference. And I'm I'm seeing some notes. I can't hear anything. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping you can hear me. Um, the world has changed. Our family lives have changed. We're all living and breathing and resting and sleeping all under one roof. But the change is we're also learning under this roof. We're um, having school under the roof. We are working underneath this roof. And all of the family members combined under this roof creates a little bit of stress, especially for the adults, but also certainly for the children in the family. I think a lot of times the kids are tired of playing with those plastic toys, tired of pestering their siblings. They're just aching and ready to do something different and to keep their hands busy. So I thought today we would talk just for a moment about keeping children's hands busy. And I was reminded of a of my grandma, Grandma Goodwin her, was her name, and she absolutely loved to knit. She would knit everything. You know, I don't know if you remember those slippers, those knitted slippers with the big pom-pom on its toe. Um, she would knit those, and I'd have a new pair every year for Christmas. Um, she'd knit scarves and hats and you name it, she would knit it. And I think what she... Well, I think what she was doing was she was alleviating her stress. The The process of knitting, the knit pearl, the knit pearl was very calming to her. And she always said to me, Sandra, you know, busy hands are happy hands. And so I know that in today's world, we need to keep our hands busy. And um I thought maybe I'd give you a couple of ideas for keeping hands busy for children. One of the ways to do that is through weaving and weaving with nature. When you walk out your door, a lot of times you just sort of look forward and you look to where you're walking and look to where you're going and you don't pay much attention to what's below your feet. And so I'm gonna urge you uh, if you're a teacher or if you're a parent or if you're a child to urge you to go outside and look beneath your feet and see what you can see. There's tons and tons of things to see on your grass, um, on your sidewalk, maybe out on the road if you don't live on a busy road to take a walk and see what's next to the road. Just plenty of things to see and to pick up and to keep your hands busy. So the idea is to maybe do some weaving and that would keep your hands busy. And I've got a couple of examples. Um, my granddaughter and I went out and we found what's called, let's see if you can see this, we found what's called 
Y sticks. You see the stick has a Y in it. And you, you might think to yourself, oh my gosh, this is this is would be too hard to find, but it is amazing when you start looking how many Y sticks you can find in in your backyard under a tree, especially after a big storm. And my granddaughter just wove with some ribbon that we found and some seashells. When you're at grandma's house, you always have lots of seashells because I'm a seashell lover and some coral, a little coral. And she made this beautiful weaving and kept her hands busy. While she was doing this weaving, I found a stick that looks like this. And I found myself just weaving some pink string that I had found with some seashells and I wove some pine cones along the bottom. As I was doing this, I felt a certain calm come over me. It was truly remarkable. I was a little anxious as I was working, uh, as I started working on this. But the more I worked with the nature and feeling the branch and feeling the pine cones, the more calm I became. Because we know that scientists have told us and researchers have told us that when you handle nature, when you work with nature, that there is a calming effect. And especially with the wrapping, it's much like grandma's knit pearl, knit pearl, wrap, 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 and a certain calmness comes over, over you. Another example is my granddaughter found this. It's not a Y stick, it's a V stick. And she just wove bits and pieces of things that we found um, in, in the gift box, actually. We just went to the gift box. So the idea would be to go out, find some sticks, go to your gift box, your wrapping um, box that you might have for wrapping gifts and see what you can find. You can also use um, bits and pieces of nature like I did with this. This was great fun. A huge scientific experiment for me. I made an easel and I made it out of four sticks. I first, I learned so much when I was doing this. I first uh, wrapped the two sticks, these two sticks up here together, these two sticks right here. And I first used the floral tape and that didn't work very well. So then I decided I'm going to use this yarn, this like twine blue twine and that worked much better so the first thing to do is do the two sticks together at the top here these two sticks and then I added the stick in the back and that's kind of like the easel stand and then I added the place to place your object or your picture or whatever that you want to place one of the things I learned was to find thin sticks. I first started out with some fat sticks and that didn't seem to work because it was too hard for me to handle and my coordination wasn't very good. And so I couldn't get it to come together. But then I went out and found some thinner sticks and that worked much better. And then this stick right down here, you see, is a little bit bigger and it needs to be a little bit bigger so you can rest whatever the picture or um, in my case, I used this beautiful starfish. So that was fun. And I learned a lot of things. I learned, I learned the, the you see it, there it is, right there sitting on my little desk. Um, I learned about, uh, about balance. I learned about persistency because when I first did it, I wasn't, I wasn't doing very well. I didn't, um, I couldn't make it balance. I couldn't make it tie together. I just was having a hard time. And so it's not only a scientific experience of balance, but it's also a hand-eye coordination. It's also an experience in being persistent and working at a task and, and getting it done. Another thing that we found was really fun is we, I, went and got a cardboard, a piece of cardboard. And you see it's it's just from a legal pad of paper. And I got the cardboard and I cut slits in the side of the cardboard, along the side, both sides. And then I took my, my twine that I used on the easel 
and I wrapped it around. I taped it on the back and I wrapped it around first. And then, so I had like this blank palette with these um, twine around it. And then I went out and I found some things that I thought would be pretty and beautiful to weave into my, um, my nature weaving. And you can see that this could be a wonderful project for no matter what age. I, I had a great time doing it. And I know my granddaughter would have a good time doing it. And even um, younger children would have a great time going out and finding some pieces of nature from the yard. Look beneath your feet again and um, see what you can find and then weave it into the piece of cardboard with the yarn. One of the things that I know, I, I, when several years ago, I went to visit this, this child care center and um, I was walking up to the child care center on the sidewalk and um, I was pulling my, my bag along behind me with my computer and my computer bag. And um, there was a, a young mom and she was holding a baby and uh, behind her, trailing behind her was a preschooler. And the preschooler kept stopping and it would make me stop real fast with my computer bag. And she'd lean over and she'd look down and, and her mom would quickly say, come on, come on, Isabel, let's get going. Let's get going. We're late. We have to get going. And so the, the little girl would get up and trot along behind, behind the mommy. And pretty soon Isabel was back down at the, at the sidewalk and made me stop again. Stop short with my computer bag. And again, mommy said, come on, come on, Isabel, we're late. We got to get going. Mommy's going to be late for work. And again, Isabel got up and started walking behind her mommy. And Isabel did that a third time. And finally, I thought, I wonder what in the world Isabel is looking at. And I finally looked down and I saw that Isabel was looking at ants working very diligently in the crack of the sidewalk. So Isabel learned how to look beneath her feet. She learned how to see, oh my goodness, and children are good at that. I guess it's because their feet are closer to the ground and uh, their body is closer to the ground and it's easy for them to see the ground. It's easier than for adults to notice, but children are very observant. And they're very curious about what's below their feet. So take some time, go out today, look what's beneath your feet, and see if you can make some sort of nature art or nature weaving from what you find beneath your feet and what you find beneath the children's feet. And just before we go, um, I wanted to say that weaving isn't just for you can do a lot of weaving with just household items like this one. I just found my baking rack, which I'm using a lot lately. I know you probably are too, my cooling rack. And I decided I'd go find some ribbon and I'd find some nature and I would weave on my baking rack. So maybe that's one thing that you can do. We also went out. I hate to say this, but I went out and I found um, some some plants that I should have probably cut down to the surface um, in the fall, but I didn't. And I found a lot of dried plants that I just very um, neatly tied up with this raffia. And it will make a beautiful little piece of nature to place somewhere in my home. And finally... You can also do, this isn't necessarily nature weaving, but this is finding, keeping children's hands busy and the theme of keeping children's hands busy. This was sent to me and uh, by Gary Bilizikian, president of Guidecraft. And I guess his son, um, maybe Dan, I can't, I can't really remember which son, but made this wonderful little robot out of, um, screws and nails and a piece of wood and it was everything that he found in the garage so you don't have to go outside although I'd love for you to go outside and look what's beneath your feet you can also go to the kitchen 
and you can go to the garage and you can find lots and lots of things that are quick and easy and, and interesting and fun for children to keep their hands busy. So if you'd like some other ideas about the weaving, um, weaving with nature, I provided a PowerPoint presentation with a few extra weaving ideas. And there's also a, a little video of my granddaughter, Sarah, Sierra Elizabeth Austin, who made a wonderful bird's nest out in my yard and um, as a way to attract birds to come to grandma's yard um, for a spring feast. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy you stuck around. I hope you uh, hope you found this um, fun and an interesting way to keep children's hands busy. Remember, busy hands are happy hands. Um, enjoy yourself. Enjoy this time that you have at home. I know sometimes it's stressful, but hopefully you've thought of a few extra ideas to keep children's hands busy. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.